the introduction, I wanted to point out a few things before we get to the video. Although we announced this uh, event to be a live Facebook, because of the nature of the, the, the production of the video, we had to do it in two different locations that we kind of thought it would be difficult to have a live event in two different locations at the same time. But we decided to prepare a video of the two locations and put them together and present them to you. Um, so you would be uh, seeing that video, which is probably 16, 16 and a half minutes. And after that, I would be available to uh, answer your comments and questions and discussion. My contact information is available on the uh, comments section of the Facebook. Uh, a couple of other things that I wanted to point out is uh, when we prepared the video, uh, by mistake, I said last year, a couple of times I mentioned last year when I talk about the uh, floricane type of, uh, of, of blackberries. And so um, we kind of tried to correct that by um, writing on the video that that is this year, during the summer, you would see it. Uh, so I just wanted to, uh, to, uh, to point that out and hopefully you would be able to pay attention to that, to that error that we, we committed. And then also what's really important is just for you to understand that when we talk about two different types of canes, when we talk about blackberries, there are primal cane and floricanes. Primal cane are vegetative part of the cane. When they are vegetate, at the vegetative stage, which is usually the first year. First year cane, all were referred to uh, primal canes. So vegetative stage, first year cane is always referred to as primal cane. And then that primal cane, when it goes through the chilling, it becomes, during the second year, when it's ready to produce, it is called floricane. So it's important to be able to uh, distinguish between those two types of cane. So again, first year cane is always called primal cane. And that primal cane is vegetative during the first year. It goes through chilling and winter time. And then the following year, it becomes, uh, it produces fruit. During that second year, it is called floricane. So I wanted you to pay attention to that. So. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and look at the video, and then I will be available to answer your question, and hopefully we'll be able to discuss this further. Thank you for your attention. Hello, I'm Reza Rafi, Extension Specialist at Virginia State University. Um, I want to share with you today uh, two ways of pruning for blackberry. Blackberry is a really interesting crop. It fits small farmers and has lots of good potential, particularly for the local markets. In Virginia, everybody loves blackberry. So, but however, blackberry is a very intensive crop and requires at least three types of pruning. So I'm gonna share with you two of those pruning today. And then in the winter time, which is the winter pruning, I'll share with you uh, that one hopefully later on. But today, what I'm going to share with you is what we call tip pruning. Tip pruning is, we do this usually in the spring, end of the spring, when the new cane, the new canes comes up. So this is this year's cane. It just comes up what they call primal cane. Primal cane comes up and it passes the third level of wire, which is um, the third level of wire, which probably at least I've saved five, five and a half feet tall. So you want to make sure you primal cane passes that. And then what we'll do, we're going to go in there and prune this. So it is better to pinch this when it's fresh soft wood that's what I would do I would pinch it probably a foot or foot and a half 
on the top of that wire. So I see in there, I go in there and simply pinch that. However, if you don't pinch that when it's soft wood, this would continue growing and it gets really goes hot up and then it becomes woody. And when it's woody, then you have to use your pruner. And then when you use pruner, you cut the wood. That wound is open and exposed to diseases. So it's really, really important. You know, at the springtime, probably uh, between May and uh, April and May, when these new canes come up, you just walk around and just pinch those primal canes when they get above the third wire. So that's really, really important. So what does this do? Pinching. If you don't pinch it, the cane is going to go way up. So I, I pinched it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what would happen if after you pinched it. So this is another example that we have. Let's say I pinched this um, a month ago. See, this was pinched a month ago. So that pinching of the meristem of that young part would stimulate the laterals. You see these laterals? That pinching, removing what they call of the tip. When you do that, you stimulate your cane to produce laterals. You see all these laterals that it produces? And why it's, is it important to do that? Because next year, the majority of this, of the fruit will be located on the laterals. So it's really important for us to be able to stimulate the primal cane this year it develops laterals and then those laterals will have food next year so if you don't have a lot of laterals on your primal cane then you have less food so it's really important to stimulate by cutting the tips and stimulate the development of those laterals so i'm going to go ahead and show you a few of those that we've done uh, just to so you could see this was done very recently, and you could see that just beginning to, beginning to develop those laterals. So you could see this is another example. We want laterals to be developed because we have a lot of really good quality fruits developed on that. So that's the first type of pruning. We call this tip pruning. And the time to do that, it is in probably April, May, when the primal cane, sometimes until June, and even maybe July, when the primal cane comes up. So keep your eyes on those new canes, on those new primal cane, when they come up, you make sure you walk around and just pinch them. So it's better not to use um, pruner, but you know, if, you, if they get out of hand, they grow, and then you have to go in there and then you just use pruner to be able to prune them on the top of your third level wire and then you would stimulate them to uh, to produce laterals where they have fruit. So we're, we're going to go ahead and show you the other types of pruning which is uh, removing, summer pruning, which is removing the old canes. Now I want to share with you the summer pruning. But before I go on, you may want to ask me Rafi, why do we have to do pruning? You know, it takes a lot of time, and it does take a lot of time and effort. Why do we have to pruning? The pruning is done for two reasons. You remove the old canes, which are two years old. They have diseases all over them. They are unproductive. They don't do anything. They are literally dying, so you might as well take them out. So that's to, to take that sources of diseases out of your inside that whole crown of plants that you have in there. So that's number one, to reduce diseases. And then the other one is to be able to improve the fruit quality. Pruning is all that rejuvenates the plant and it improves the fruit quality. So those are the two reasons that we usually do pruning. So I explained the tip pruning, which you usually do in the, in the um, early summer or late spring, and then by the time you get done with your harvest, 
after harvest, we need to come in and do summer pruning. Summer pruning, we remove all the canes that they gave you food that season. You need to remove them and open up the space for the primal cane that are going to give you fruit next year. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that. So what you see in here, I'm demonstrating this in a, in a container grown blackberry. Just the principle of it is the same. So because to compensate for the length of the, of the container, I'm having the, my canes taller. So if this is the wire, to compensate for that, for the, for the length of that, I'm letting this go up. So on the other hand, if you could see in here, a tip prune, see that? I tip prune that uh, in the summer, I tip prune that, and look at all these laterals that are developed. This, this is beautiful. You could see all the laterals are developed, and then the majority of the fruit, or your fruit, or my fruit, is going to be located on this lateral. So, we want to stimulate the plant to give us lateral so we can have a lot of fruit. So, so that's, this is the cane, what we call primal cane. This year, is, this is primal cane. This is what is going to give us fruit next year, next summer. So what I'm going to show you, this is a cane. You could see all this, all this um, leftover of the fruits. And so this is the cane that they gave me fruit this past summer. So they are unproductive, they're getting old, they have diseases. You could see, even see the beginning, the, 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 the colors of the, of the leaves are just telling you they are, they are going down. And I need to open, take this away and remove this so I can open up the space for the development of a new primal cane this year. So I'm gonna go in there and go identify my a uh, cane which was what we call floricane. The floricane is the one that gave me fruit last year. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this. So this is the cane. You could see the cane that gave me fruit last year. You could see the, sh the color of this cane. If you look at the color of this, you could see it's older, it's woody. And the new cane, the primal cane, this year's cane is green and fresh and clean. But the old cane is kind of uh, old and woody, so we need to go ahead and do this. When do we do this? When we get done with the fruit. Anytime after you are done, completely done with the fruit, you can go ahead and do that. So therefore, we go in there as low as we can. We just go in there and take take this up. So I'll... Uh, so this is the... So that's the old cane that, I, that I'm taking out. So, but the, here's the trick. You gotta be careful. Don't drag this out because dragging this out is going to cause a lot of wound and damage to this new cane. So you gotta cut this in pieces and then gently take it out without causing any damage to that one. You just go in there with you. Go in there and cut this in different pieces. And then piece by piece we take it out. Why do we do that again? Because we don't want to drag it out because that would that would damage. You go. See this? All they gave me fruit last year. This is all the fruit from last year. And then just take this out gently without causing any damage to my to my, to my primer. Okay. There you go. All right. So. Uh, you see immediately, we're beginning to see a space opening up. So this lower stuff, I can just remove this. Inside the plant, what we usually do, we like to, in, inside the container, in this case, because I'm growing in the container, we like to have two primal canes, two new canes, and we remove the other stuff. So I'm gonna come in there and just, just tie this uh, primal cane to the wire and then remove, remove the floricane. And here you go, you've got, I'm just gonna go ahead and this is, this is a third one that I have. So this is a third primal cane that I have. In this case, it's is, uh, is skinny, it's thin, and all I want is two really strong, uh, nice looking, uh, primal cane for my next year. So I'm just going to go in there and 
remove this. Again, if you are in the field, you just need to decide how many cans you need to have for next year. Usually in the, in the field, we usually leave uh, four to five cans depending on the space. Two on this side of your wire, two on the other side of the wire. But this is just for demonstration that we are showing you. So just, uh, okay, so this is another, another piece of Floricane. You could see the, this is actually a variety Osage. Osage is a new variety from University of Arkansas, John Clark's program. That, that, that we are testing. So this is another, another fluorocane. It, was a, it wasn't a very strong fluorocane, but you could see that gave us, some, gave us some fruit. We are done with it, but we're gonna go in there. We just go in there and just remove it. Okay, Don't drag it, just make sure you cut it in, in pieces. And then you take you take this out. So again, inside the container, I like to have two a strong, very strong floor, uh, primer cane. This is my cane for next year. What's going to happen, this is going to go through the winter time, through the chilling, and then going to lose all the, all the leaves. And then next, uh, next, uh, next spring, they're gonna, the flowers are going to, the buds and flowers are going to open up. And then we get a new cycle of growth for this. So every single one of these canes, what they call are um, every, every other year, they produce fruit every other year. So this comes and grows vegetatively this year and next year it gives us fruit. So after the second year, after it gives us fruit, we're going to go in there and tie, um, cut them down and deal with the new primal cane, as I mentioned. So again, we use the branch locks and the wire gauge 12. We just go in there and just tie our canes. And great. So as you could probably see, we've got some long, long laterals. We could probably um, remove or some of these laterals and make them shorter, or we could probably wait until winter time because if you cut them, there would be a secondary lateral which will develop. This is up to you. I'm going to go ahead and cut them for now and then uh, keep it and then you see the, the laterals. I'm going to go ahead and again this is tall because again as I said I'm compensating for the height on my, on my, uh, on my um, uh, container. So I'm going to go ahead and get another Another one of these, and uh, just this is called branch locks. It's really interesting what we could do with it. We just go in there and put the cane inside and just tie that, holds it up really nicely without causing any damage to that. So, this is uh, again looking at this, this is the container. We remove all the all this stuff outside. We don't want to leave this stuff in, uh, in here. They need to be, they need to go out. We clean this and what we have is container that could be the same in the field. You have a container uh, with two canes, two strong primer cane, remove the flora cane. And as, again, as I said, they're going to go through the winter time and next year it's going to give you fruit. This concludes our uh, today's session. Thank you for watching and then we're going to go ahead and, and uh, answer your questions and your comments. But yet again, if you, have, uh, if you want to communicate with us via email, uh, just uh, arafi at vsu.edu. Uh, we'd be glad to uh, respond to your email and your communication. Thank you. Yes, uh, well, thank you for watching. Again, uh, we're really sorry about the, the, there are a couple of places that um, this year we had uh, we had the fruit, the floricane, and then I, uh, by mistake, I'm mentioning last summer. Those are this this summer, summer of 2020 that we harvested that. So just uh, need to be need to be aware of that. But with that, again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, be glad to answer your.
your questions. Mark, if, would you like to help us to, uh, to share with us those questions if there are any? Okay, first question. Um, can the same techniques that are used for pruning blackberries also be used for pruning raspberries? Uh, that is a really good question, yes. However, at the raspberry there are, you need to be careful because most of the raspberry variety are what they call primocane raspberry varieties. Having said that, there are, uh, each cane is capable of producing two crops. So it's the cane, that first year cane that I mentioned vegetatively it grows, it comes up and at the tip of that, it gives you food the first year, and then you remove that tip, uh, uh, the, 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 on the tip that you get that first year crop, and then if you prune, remove that part that they gave you food, that cane the following year, it gives you a second crop. So most of the primocane type raspberries are, it gives you two crops. So you need to be, you need to be careful with that. I'm hoping to be able to have a, to have a session about the primocane type raspberry to demonstrate uh, how to manage the cane. It's a little bit different because uh, the most of the traditional black bay varieties are floricane type. They only give you one fruit, uh, one crop, or one, uh, once they, they give you a uh, uh, fruit only once. But most of the raspberry variety, they give you two crops per, per year. So you just have to have to be careful how to manage that. As I said, I'm they're hoping to be able to have a session about pruning, pruning raspberries in the, in the near future. Okay, can you take some of the clippings to start new plants? I would not. No, I, I, I would strongly recommend because uh, growing black, a raspberry, a black, a blackberries is a huge investment uh, that you do. You want to make sure you start with cleaning material uh, because uh, when you have, uh, when you start growing raspberries or blackberry for that same reason, uh, you may have, uh, there are some new viruses. Mm -hmm that it takes a, lot, a few years before they express themselves. And once they get infected, you definitely don't want to use that same material for to start new plant. So uh, it's very really recommend that uh, buy, uh, buy tissue culture plants, and then if you contact your local or uh, national uh, nurseries or uh, farms that they produce, uh, they, they sell you uh, planting material. You want to make sure they are clean and uh, certified and uh, uh, tissue culture plants, but uh, we strongly recommend don't use or don't get it from your neighbors or don't use your own, um, uh, to get it from your old, old planting materials. Okay, what if you did not do the spring pruning? What if you don't? That gets really, really tall. The yeah, blackberry has this tendency that uh, the primal can, if you don't do, to do the tip pruning, that goes way up, probably sometimes between four to five, uh, six to seven feet tall. And then it breaks with, uh, if there you have a storm wind, strong wind, they usually break. And then that, uh, that causes damage. Again, for us, as I, as I mentioned, if uh, the majority of the fruit for the, in the following year is located on, the, on those laterals. So it's really important for you to be able to tip prune, remove that tip to be able to stimulate the laterals. So majority of the fruit is the following year is located on those, on those laterals. Okay, when do you do winter pruning? Oh, winter pruning, that's a very good question. Winter pruning we do usually in February when the plants are completely dormant because we do a lot of cutting. And then when they are dormant, it seems like I, you don't you don't damage them for the diseases. It's cold for the diseases to enter, so we do a lot of cutting during the winter time. But when they are uh, uh, when, they, when they are green, physiologically active, we try to minimize uh, cutting. So the the winter pruning that we do usually do in, in February. We're going to have a session hopefully in uh, February or early March demonstrating the winter pruning of the blackberry. Okay, if you have berries uh, along the fence line, should you do this to them also? Uh, yes, it, it is. 
again, it's really, really important to do pruning. Removing the old canes, uh, it just is source of a lot of problem. You wanna make sure you remove it wherever they are located. Remove the old cane and let the primer on the new cane to be able to develop and produce fruit. Okay, when is, uh, what is the best time to do root cuttings? Oh, root cutting. Well, uh, again, uh, for the root cutting, uh, to uh, root cutting for what purpose? To produce, to regenerate plants or, or what, what's the purpose of root cutting? Uh, I don't you, know, it just says that. Just, uh, uh, just if, you could, uh, if you could explain what's the purpose of doing the root cutting. Okay, okay, maybe the person will, will write some more. Mr. Agron, maybe he can clarify. Sure. Um, I, you covered the winter pruning, I think. That was another question. Right. Um, okay, what trimmings can we do in Virginia Beach now? What trimming can we do in Virginia Beach? Yeah, trimming. Um, trimming is, uh, the, the, well, wh what it is, is we are not, being in Petersburg, uh, it's not much different than, uh, than, than Virginia Beach. Probably you would follow the same, the same method or techniques of pruning and trimming in, in, in Virginia Beach. So the, the, okay. the locations are not much different in terms of the temperature and the time of the pruning. Okay, next question. What can I do about black spots on blackberry leaves? Oh, black spot, they, um, well, depending on when, uh, you have black spot, they usually spray, they spray fungicide uh, to be able to control them. Uh, but uh, if they get too late in the, in, the, in the late fall or winter time, you don't wanna do anything with them on the leaves because they're gonna fall down. But during the spring and the summer, definitely you need to apply fungicide to be able to control the black, uh, black spot on those leaves, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, leaf spots. Okay, I have a new plant I just planted this year. Do I need to do anything with it this year? It's still fairly small. Fairly small, no, just keep your eyes on that, on that plant. Hopefully that cane uh, is going, going to grow and if you provide them with a little water them and then give them a little bit of fertilizer that they really have the tendency to grow very quickly um so if you feed them and water them they grow and then it gives you that uh, primocane that first year cane would be primocane once they get to the five feet tall you want to tip from them and stimulate them to develop those laterals in fact uh, what if i if i make common with the first part of the video, what we tip prune those very one year old plant. Uh, I had just planted them in uh, probably oh, four months ago. So those are, you know, but they are well taken care of in terms of the uh, weed control and, uh, and uh, uh, fertilizer and water. They are just really, you pay attention to those details. They have the tendency to really grow very very quickly, particularly if you have clean planting material, tissue culture planting material, they grow, they grow very fast. Okay, my blackberry canes are leaned over and touching the ground. Can I root them to get a new plant? Well, you could. You say you should buy new disease-free tissue culture plants. Yeah, yeah, you could. That's the reason those uh, laterals, those are the laterals that they have. Uh, they, they grow really tall and long and they touch the ground and they touch the ground and they start producing. Um, yeah, you could do that. You could probably uh, cut it from the mother plants and let it, let it grow to be a whole new plant. But yet again, in principle, we would like to recommend planting uh, new, with new planting material. But if you want to have an extra plant from your own uh, old blue blackberries, uh, that's that's fine. But uh, yes, you could. Uh, they, when those the, the lateral when they touch the ground, they start uh, developing roots, and then you could probably have a whole new plant after cutting it, separating it from the other plant. Okay, 
Is there any any need to mulch roots or cover roots for winter in Maryland Zone Seven? Oh uh, no, no. Black pine is hardy. Uh, zone Seven, no. You don't need if they are in the field. Uh, you don't need to be worried about any covering covering uh, ground or covering roots or anything. But however, if you plant them in the containers, uh, you, if they go below 10 degree temperature, uh, Fahrenheit, 10 degree Fahrenheit temperature, then they, you don't want the root in the container to freeze. Uh, that is, uh, but if they are in the field, in the ground, uh, there's no reason to be worried about. They're quite hardy in zone, uh, zone seven. Okay, I have a few limbs that rooted into the ground. Should I cut them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I had a general question. When can I plant and where's the best place to buy plants? Okay, good. Well, uh, the, the be actually, if the plants are small, if they're, because sometimes when we buy tissue culture plant, they are really small and very young. Those plants are better, we better plant them in springtime because in the springtime, the weather is going to only get better, warmer and warmer. So having said that, you need to make sure you have enough water and moisture when you plant those young plants. However, if you have one gallon uh, plants, so sometimes we buy our tissue culture plants and we keep them in one gallon pots for a few months maybe inside the greenhouse in a warm place, they go, they get strong, and then we plant them in the, in the fall. So in September, uh, uh, end of August, September, up to mid-September, it's, it's fine to plant uh, a strong one gallon uh, blackberries. But if they are very young, you wanna make sure you plant them in, uh, in uh, April or May. Okay, we've got lots of questions. Um, we have a small farm near Richmond. We had early blossoms on over 200 blackberry plants, but we had a freeze in early May. Right. We lost 85% of the fruit this year. Is there any preventative we could have done to save them? If we hear of an impending freeze next year, what should we do? Yeah, I'm really sorry to, to hear that. I, I, I just feel that uh, it's just the, the discomfort and pain that the grower usually go through uh, with those unpredictable, particularly this time, this uh, year we had it that late, uh, you know, it's mid-May, uh, we had that last frost and it's just, uh, just heartbreaking to see beautiful bloom all over and all of a sudden overnight you lose them. Well, the only way uh, that uh, there are overhead irrigations that you actually could freeze that uh, that you could freeze, uh, they do this with strawberry. And you have some growers, blackberry growers, they have overhead irrigation uh, when the temperature goes uh, below 20, uh, 25 degree temperature. And then you turn on that overhead irrigation and you actually freeze the flower bud, the flowers, the bloom. And that, uh, that ice protects the fruit. Uh, inside that ice, ice is warmer and the wind causing low temperature, and that protects that. But that overhead irrigation it has to go on all night. They usually do this with uh, with the strawberry, but yet again, it it is it is cumbersome. It's uh, it's not easy to do, um, and that whole system needs to be installed, and you need to have a good source of uh, source of water to be able to. To protect that. Other than that, uh, uh, there are some growers that they use, uh, uh, they have the heat, heating system and the tall towers. They, uh, we, we're going to go ahead and put those information on the, on the website, uh, on our VSU website. But the, the, usually the, the, the common system that um, small grower can use that overhead irrigation to to, uh, to ice the flowers, the bloom, and protect them against those late frosts. Okay. Um, 
I planted four new plants this year. Two of the primocanes survived and sprouted new primocanes. Should I just cut the originals and let the new primocanes keep growing? No, if you bought the plant this year, the primocane, but again, if you, if you recall from our conversation with our video, the primocane, if you plant this, all of those came from this year, they all are primocane and they all could stay. Again, if you have four plants, depending on the space, you maintain a few of them. And again, uh, the cutting, try to remove the extra primocane during the winter time. Again, in principle, you wanna do a less cutting when they are at vegetative stage, when they are physiologically active, you don't wanna do much cutting. The cutting you could do during the winter time. So on the other hand, you could go in there during the winter time when the plants are asleep or dormant, uh, you could remove the extra primocane. Because again, as I said, depending on the space and the neighboring plants, uh, in every plant of blackberry, you want to have between four and five um, primocanes set up for the following year to give you fruit. Uh, two on this side of the wire and two on the other side of the wire. And then if you have too many uh, primocanes, then the you know, it's not being crowded and it just, uh, it's not good for the, for the air to move between those canes. And then there is a tendency that this fruit size is, it starts getting smaller when you have, when you have too many, too many canes, but four or five. And if you have, if you have a plant that has a good number of primal canes and the next plant doesn't only have two, can always compensate between this plant and next next plant. So and you want to make sure that on the average you have uh, each plant have between four to five prime canes. Okay, we bought a house with blackberries and very overgrown. We noticed old fruit dried up. Is it okay to cut down these plants now in September? Should we cut them all down? So um, I need to know when, uh, when you, when, she, when she's talking about we have blackberry. Are these uh, wild blackberries, or these are cultivated blackberries? Or somebody have planted these, or is there a wild blackberry out there? So you just, if you could uh, comment on that, uh, I just it would be interesting to know whether there are wild blackberry out. There in the backyard or somebody planted uh, planted those uh, those blackberries so those are those are two different things again i think what's uh, speaking of the wild blackberries if you have cultivated blackberry uh, if you something that you plant you want to make sure you remove all of those wild blackberries around your your house they need to stay at least 300 to 500 feet apart from your cultivated blackberry those wild, wild blackberries out there, they are the sources of all kinds of diseases and viruses. And before you know it, that the, those viruses and diseases are transmitted by insects to your newly planted cultivated blackberry from the wild blackberries. And before long, they all are going to get infected with viruses and then you end up really losing, losing your cultivated blackberry. So if you decide to plant blackberry, you want to make sure you walk around your property, along your uh, yard, just remove all those wild blackberries. Otherwise, you're going to pretty soon you're going to have a lot of viruses and fungal problems with your cultivated blackberry. Okay, um, there's a question here. How do you know which is the sweetest blackberry variety? Well. Um, um, well, this, you, you, if you ask this question from 10 different people, they would give you 10 different answers. It just, it's one of those fruit that they, uh, each individual have really a special taste for the, for the blackberries. But uh, there are a good number of varieties out there. Again, we didn't intend to talk about the blackberry varieties. Hopefully we'd be able to do this 
and talk about specifically about black bay varieties and based on the experience that we have. The thing is what's uh, really interesting, flavor is one thing, but the size is also another factor that plays an important role. And also, if you wanna plant just for local market, there are some varieties absolutely, uh, they have great flavor, they have great size, and they are very good for local market, but they are not good shipping blackberries. So there are a variety of factors that plays in. Having said that, because you asked question about the flavor, the flavor that I like is there's a variety called Natchez. Natchez is a huge black bay varieties. There's another one called uh, Wachita. And Wachita also, uh, they are not very sweet because black bay by its nature is not very, very sweet. Um, so, and then there, there is another one called Osage that I showed in the video. And then there's another new variety from North Carolina State called Vaughn. D-O-N, uh, that is also a really good variety. But also what is really important to notice about the blackberry is uh, some of these blackberry varieties are early season, some of them are mid season, and some of them are kind of toward the late season variety. That's also important. So flavor, size, uh, shipability or uh, shipment part or shipping, a uh, characteristic of the black bay is also important. And also uh, for what part of the season would you like to, uh, to produce? For example, I like early varieties because as probably many of you have experienced, mid to late season black bays are attacked for, by June bugs and uh, Japanese beetles. And in order to protect those black bays against against those uh, terrible insects during the summer, you got to spray them with a lot of insecticide. But for that reason, the early variety blackberries seemed like in uh, end of May, beginning June up to July, you don't have that problem with the Japanese beetle and the June beetle. Once they come, the only way to protect them really is to be able to spray them with uh, uh, with insecticide. So, but also that's, that's another factor. Okay, you might have covered this one. Um, I was unable to do a spring pruning. Do I prune back several feet this fall? Uh, read, read the question again. So, uh, okay, so the person said, I was unable to do a spring pruning. Do I prune back several feet? this fall? Yeah, they, if you didn't do a spring pruning, uh, you don't have laterals. So you need to prune, uh, remove that top part. Uh, we are still in uh, early part of September. You would be able to hopefully develop some, some laterals. Definitely those tall cane that you have, either you have to bend them and tie them on the wire or, or, uh, or, uh, if they if they stay if you tie them to the wire while they are way tall, definitely the wind, the strong wind and storm, they're gonna they're gonna break all of that. So definitely pruning would be would be uh, the right thing to do. Even though you have to, they're not they're not soft. You could use a pruner, and then you could disinfect the pruner. You could probably use a disinfectant to clean that pruner before the before the cut. Uh, uh, to do the cutting to stimulate the lateral development. Okay, somebody asks, can you type the kinds of blackberries? Uh, I think the names of the varieties you were saying, maybe we can put them in the video. Um, or well, I, I could type them in here. Yeah, actually, yeah, we, we could, but yet again, uh, hopefully, uh, Soon, uh, we could probably have a short, short, um, short Facebook live just to to talk about different characteristics of different varieties of, of blackberry. And and if if we, we we wouldn't get to do that, definitely we put some more information pretty soon on our website. And we 
will share that uh, that piece of information with you. It seems like there are a good number of viewers that are interested in learning more about those those varieties. There are a lot of really good varieties out there, and then we'd be happy to share the information that we have and experience that we've had ourselves at the farm. We'd probably share that with you. So put that information on the on the website. Okay. I started a container this year in spring of one blackberry bush. Do I wait until February to prune or do it now? Again, uh, the, the, depend on what kind of pruning are we talking about. So you plant it this year, so you just do the tip pruning uh, because it is, if you plant it this year, it's going to be primocane. What you have in there is primocane. The primocane is vegetative, that needs to so tip pruning to develop, uh, stimulate the laterals, and then it goes through the winter time. This winter of 2000 uh, would be 2020, 21. Um, um, so, and then next, next, uh, next February, you go in there, and the laterals, when they get too tall, you cut those, the tip of those laterals to be able to manage them better. So the tip pruning is all you need to do if it's if you planted them this year. Okay. If I want to move my one plant that has only been in the ground one year, what is the best time to do that? Very good question. Excellent question. The best time to remove anything is the when they are dormant. When they are not dormant, if you remove them. The roots are active, but the whole plant is physiologically act active and removing it from that, you completely disturb the whole physiology of the plant and then you cut all those hair roots and that really disturbs it and then most likely you would end up losing it. The best time to remove any plants is during the winter time when they are completely dormant. Okay, I think that might be the last question, unless there are some others. Let's, let's give it a, a little while. We had up to 150 viewers, now it's at about 80. But a lot of people saying it's, uh, they learned a lot. They said, your love of blackberry growing is inspiring. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. We definitely, uh, I hope uh, when we get beyond this, uh, this current situation, uh, our uh, Randall farm, uh, we have a, a, a really good number of uh, new varieties that we brought in, in the field and in the tunnel. We just experienced to come in there and watch the raspberries and blackberries. And then we have a large collection of the blueberry. And some of you have come, but hopefully when we get, when we get beyond this, uh, this current uh, COVID-19, uh, I hope, uh, then we invite you to come and uh, we would love to share what we have with you and just give you a tour anytime after this uh, this uh, COVID-19, hopefully. Thank you all very much for your attention. Again, uh, arafi at vsu.edu, telephone number 804-712-4600. Look forward to your communication and please communicate with us. We decide to plant blueberry and blackberries and raspberries because We've done it a good number of times. We made a lot of mistakes. We learn from experience. We don't want you to make those same uh, mistakes. And then call us and then we're happy to share our experiences uh, with you. Thank you and have a good evening. Oh, oh wait, oh wait. We, get, we got a few more questions, sorry. Sure. You, you have a moment? Sure. Okay. Um, um, my plant only has two she said games, I think she meant something else. Both are fruited, how far back should I cut them? Uh, her, her, she said, or she or she said, the plant has only two what? Uh, games, G-A-M-E-S, I think she meant. Um, Cane. Oh, canes, yeah. Two canes, canes. yeah. Two canes and they gave fruit? Uh, both fruited. Yes, how far back should I cut them? Well, uh, it would be nice to know the name of the variety. If they gave fruit, 
I'm surprised that they didn't have any new canes. The, so the, when the fruit, traditional variety, black bay varieties, uh, when they give you fruit, those are flory canes. Those are two years old canes. And then that the new primal cane needs to come up. I'm surprised uh, there wasn't any primal cane. So, uh, but I, uh, I would wait and let, let that vegetative part, the leaves provide photosynthesis. Hopefully um, we'll, you will get some, uh, some primal cane coming up soon. Uh, but other than that, I, don't, I, I need to know more about that. Again, you can communicate and send, send us a picture uh, and then send the name. Because again, today we talked about uh, floricane type blackberries. Like what I described about raspberry, there are some, a few number of uh, primocane type blackberry as well. A Primark 45, Primark Traveler, and uh, Primark Freedom, or those are the three uh, new primocane type blackberry. Primocane type blackberry, like raspberry, we give you two fruits a year. So management, cane management of that is completely different and what described today. So, but the traditional blackberry varieties are floricane. So when they give you fruit, that, year, that same year you need, we are hoping that you would get primal cane as well. But if you didn't just uh, send me the name of the variety and then share with us some pictures. So hopefully we'll be able to help you with that. Okay, some people are asking for a winter pruning class. Will you be doing a winter class? Absolutely, absolutely. We'll do, uh, we'll do, uh, depending on uh, whether we're gonna continue with this situation. Uh, but if, if, if this continues, we definitely would have a, a Facebook Live from our farm mm -hmm. and we'll demonstrate uh, in detail winter pruning. And then, but if, uh, if, if you're able to get to the farm, I mean, if you are not, you just do it, uh, you just do it uh, online, demonstrate like today. Yeah, we definitely will, will have a winter pruning because it's really fundamentally it's important in a blackberry operation to do winter pruning. Okay, can you take the shoots that come up away from the plant and replant elsewhere? I, I wouldn't, uh, again, uh, because if you want to plant blackberry, you need to start with a really clean material. We always recommend to buy new plants. The certified plants, you, may, you know that you're starting with the clean material, disease-free, they, they don't have viruses, they don't have fungal problem, you start with that. So that's our recommendation. Start with a new clean planting material, certified planting material. Okay. How do I know what kind of wild blackberries are growing at my home? Oh, they are, you definitely, <laughs> the wild blackberries are those uh, with, uh, with briar on them. They're, they don't get too tall. They are very bushy. They grow everywhere. No matter what, you, you'll see them. Uh, but they're in the, in, in, in the wood that most likely uh, you have them and they have uh, Again, uh, they are very thorny, and uh, and then you just, as I mentioned, you strongly, strongly recommend uh, clean those, wipe those out, and then cut them down uh, and remove them before you start planting uh, your cultivated blackberries. Otherwise, you'll have uh, lots of problems with diseases and, and viruses. Okay, I've planted my blackberries east to west. I want to move them from north and south. How can I move them without killing them in December? I live in zone seven. Just wait until February. When, wait until they're completely dormant and then uh, remove them. Don't do anything uh, when they are physiologically active. So wait until completely dormant. The best time to do it is usually uh, uh, late January and February to, to remove them and, 
I replace them and put them in different location. Okay, and this is the last question for now. Is it okay to plant Arapaho blackberries now? They are potted plants. We want to plant them along the fence line. Absolutely. I think uh, if they are strong, if they're uh, one gallon, they have uh, they have good root system. Yeah, this is uh, this is this is not a bad time to plant them. Yes, but if they are very small, again, tissue culture plants, small plants, you don't, you don't want them to because the winter would kill them. They would they don't have enough time to develop. But if they are they have a pretty good uh, size and good root system, uh, that's this this is not a bad time to plant. Them. Okay, we, a couple just more just came in. Um, if I'm renovating and planting new virus-free blackberries, should I change sites? Good. Um, no, the, the, the viruses and uh, fungal, the leaf spots doesn't have anything to do. If you have a history of the, of the soil-borne diseases like Phytophthora, other problem in the soil, therefore you need to plant in someplace else. But here, here's the principle. The principle is if you plant your blackberry in an area which has lots of moisture, a lot of water, they don't like, the root system doesn't like to be in the water. For that reason, we usually plant them on the, on the bed, raised bed. So, uh, but if, if you don't have any uh, major issue in terms of root diseases, then no, just go ahead and plant them in the same place. Okay, and last question I think we'll take is, um, should I plant east to west or north to south? Uh, depend, depend on, uh, the, 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 this idea of uh, north, east, south, west, as north, north, south, east, west, is really, they both work. But what you need to see is if you have, if your plants receive uh, between seven to eight hours of sunlight. So that is what's really important. Again, there is a trellis system that has been developed uh, to prevent what they call sun skull or sunburn. That shift trellis system, it's a shift trellis system that uh, it, this is not the time to talk about the detail of it. So that shift trellis system is actually literally takes all those canes, the primal cane in the winter, in the spring, and then they lay them down and then they produce the majority of the fruit on one side. So for that reason, it usually produces on the, um, on the south side. So the northern sun that comes on those of, uh, shines on those fruit to prevent that sun sculpt, sunburn, you plant them east-west. So, that is the only time you need to have the direction east, west, or south, north, south. But other than that, what's important? Just make sure you don't have you don't have line of trees that they they uh, they shade your blackberries. Again, uh, between seven to eight hours of good sunlight, that is what's important in terms of the how to, how to. Plant. Okay, I think that was the last question. Very good. Again, thank you. Stay in touch and be safe.